It's a luxury hotel like none other. A paragon of comfort and style, service and sophistication, with an intriguing past and an architectural pedigree. Whether you're staying the night or just out on the town, you'll be captivated by the Liberty Hotel. Sweeping views of the Charles River and the Boston skyline. 298 guest rooms appointed with imported linens, high definition television, and wireless internet service. Five distinctive venues for drinks and dining, each with its own creative approach to entertainment. Nestled along the banks of the Charles River in the posh Beacon Hill neighborhood of Boston, the Liberty Hotel is the only hotel in the city on the Esplanade and is conveniently located within walking distance to shopping, entertainment, and a variety of local attractions. This magnificent show place is the result of a five-year, $150 million transformation. But as you sit in the hotel's spacious lobby enjoying a cocktail and conversation, you may find it difficult to imagine the Liberty Hotel's arresting history. For 139 years, this building was the site of Boston's infamous Charles Street Jail. Its residents ranged from small-time criminals to notorious gangsters. Legend has it, famed anarchists Sacco and Vanzetti did time here, as did Nation of Islam leader Malcolm X and the men behind the Great Brinks robbery. People were held here awaiting trial, and typically that meant a relatively short period of time, although for more serious charges, someone could be here for a year or a couple of years, but that was not typical. In the early 1900s, the jail housed a group of female suffragettes arrested for interrupting a speech by President Woodrow Wilson. And during World War II, the commander and crew of captured German U-boat 873 were housed at the Charles Street Jail after surrendering to the Allies. Security was tight at the jail, but not tight enough for one local mobster. Elmer Trigger Burke was a hitman who came to Boston to shoot Spex O'Keefe, a uh, mastermind of the Boston Brinks robbery. He shot O'Keefe but only wounded him and Burke was caught and locked up at the Charles Street Jail. With the help of accomplices on the outside, one day while Trigger Burke was in the jail recreation yard, his accomplices broke into the jail through a building on the perimeter wall. Burke then ran through the gatehouse door and out to Charles Street to a waiting car and they made their escape over the Longfellow Bridge. At the Liberty Hotel today, there is a granite archway. That archway is the door through which Trigger Burke made his escape. Legendary baseball player Babe Ruth may have left the Boston Red Sox for New York, but he returned in 1926 to take a tour of the Charles Street Jail. He must have known what it would one day become when he told the New York Times, this isn't a jail, it's like a hotel. One of the jail's most infamous guests was Boston Alderman James Michael Curley. In 1904, Curley was caught taking a civil service exam for a friend and incarcerated at Charles Street. While serving his 60-day sentence, Curley ran for re-election, in jail, and won. He went on to serve four terms as mayor of Boston, two terms as a U.S. congressman, and one as governor of Massachusetts. Uh, you know, it says a lot about Boston politics, I guess. No matter how famous or infamous the inmates, it is the building itself that should be celebrated. The original structure was designed by architect Gridley J. F. Bryant and completed in 1851. With its austere monolithic stonework, it is considered one of the best examples of the Boston granite style of architecture. Gridley J. F. Bryant was one of the premier architects in the city of Boston and he specialized in using granite. The architect shared office space with a prison reform expert named Reverend Lewis Dwight and incorporated many of Dwight's ideas for a humane prison into his building design. The two of them actually wanted to create a brand new jail that would be a rehabilitation facility rather than just a place for people to be incarcerated and forgotten about. This building originally had atriums on either side of the cell blocks 
that allowed each prisoner to look out through those great three-story windows. And that same, those same three-story windows, of course, bring fresh air in so that the prisoners were treated with some respect. The jail was built in a cross with four wings of Quincy granite, extending from a central rotunda with a 90-foot atrium, what is now the hotel's grand lobby. It held 220 solid granite cells, each eight by 10 feet long. Everything about it was imposing. I mean, it was an old building, a lot of steel and granite. You really didn't get a flavor of the building until you came out onto what was called the guardroom floor, which is now the hotel lobby. And from there, you could look up and you had a commanding view of the cell areas. And you were also at the same time kind of overwhelmed, not by just by the scope of the, of the building, but the noises, the voices, the sounds of steel doors closing. By the 1950s, the jail began to suffer from overcrowding and deterioration. The inevitable outcome of an old building is we had antiquated plumbing, we had quirky electrical systems, we had uneven heating and cooling. In 1973, the poor living conditions led Charles Street inmates to revolt. The incident spurred federal court judge W. Arthur Garrity to see what conditions were like for himself by spending a night in the jail on Murderer's Row. Everybody on the staff was well aware that he was here, so he couldn't totally blend in. You know, I, I don't know if he got VIP treatment. Later that year, the courts ruled that the jail violated the constitutional rights of the prisoners housed there and should be closed. But it took several years for a new facility to be built, so it wasn't until 1990 that the guards closed the doors to the Charles Street Jail for good. We decided to make one last round of the facility and we climbed the stairs up to the fifth floor and walked up and down the, the tiers that we had done many, many times over the years. And although they were all empty, we came downstairs and kind of joking to one another, we turned in our headcount for the night and walked out the big steel door closed behind us and it was a very long time before I came back in here. But this impressive granite structure has come back to life in a new role as one of the country's most stunning and inspired reuse developments. A luxury hotel in the heart of historic Boston, the result of an expansive reconstruction that has transformed the Charles Street Jail into the Liberty Hotel. As a Bostonian, I've looked at this building for 60 plus years, always wondering what was behind those walls. It's such a spectacular space, it's such history but it's the essence of Boston, historic, on the river, on Beacon Hill. I really didn't have a choice, I just said I have to do this. You know, the very first time that I set foot into the Charles Street Jail building, I was both overwhelmed by the volumetrics of the space, but I was also daunted by the decrepitude of the building itself. Paint was peeling, uh, great amounts of junk had been stored in here, nobody had actually been in the building and the building had not been operated for a good 15 or more years and it was just in very desperate shape but at the same time there was no question in my mind that this was a building of tremendous strength and uh, beauty. Undaunted by the condition of the facility, developers Carpenter and Company and architects Cambridge 7 Associates set about bringing the building back to life. We had pretty good access to some old drawings and old records of the building, but the original documentation and the original drawings for Bryant were lost. We don't know where they are or if they still even exist, so we had not much to rely on. Crews painstakingly cleaned the granite exterior, removed layers of paint from interior brick walls, and carefully dislodged entire cell blocks. It was an architectural joy, but also an engineering nightmare. In 1848, Architect Gridley J.F. Bryant drafted a dramatic cupola to sit atop the rotunda of the original jail. But when time and money ran short, the cupola's size was reduced, and in 1949, it was removed altogether. With the Liberty Hotel project, the cupola would find its place atop the rotunda again, this time the full size Bryant intended. We relied very heavily on his original sketches about how to recreate that cupola so that we could bring the building back to the spirit that Bryant had originally conceived it with. The jail status as a National Historic Landmark created another challenge, requiring developers to adhere to strict architectural guidelines. 
We have worked very closely with the agencies involved, the Park Service, Mass Historic, Boston Landmarks, the Boston Redevelopment Authority, to make sure that every decision we made about this building was a decision that was in its best interest of truly preserving and enhancing the monument itself. To ensure that none of the bad elements from the jail's past life remained in the new building, hotel developers took the unusual step of bringing in Buddhist monks to cleanse the building of any evil spirits. Various people told me there might be bad spirits there and feng shui consultants and sort of people like that and, and I decided we ought to have the monks come and, uh, and relieve us of anything. In September of 2007, after five years of planning and construction, the former Charles Street Jail was reborn as the Liberty Hotel. We liberated the building. The catwalks where guards once kept watch on inmates are now elegant balconies overlooking the hotel's spacious lobby. You'll see that we've used a glass handrail and then we've mounted the original handrails, which are those wrought iron and cast iron components, right in front of the glass in various areas so that you get a little pastiche of the history against something that's very modern. With its high ceiling, three-story windows, and comfortable leather furniture, the lobby is a perfect meeting spot, a place to relax and read the paper or people watch. Just past the reception desk, you can learn more about the building's infamous past in the Liberty's Historical Gallery. 18 of the hotel's 298 guest rooms are in the historic jail and have kept their original character but with modern amenities. The rest are in a newly constructed adjoining 16-story tower where guests can enjoy breathtaking views of Boston. What we try to do is to combine you know, the historical experience together with a really first-class brand new building. Each guest room represents the ultimate union of historic influence and contemporary design. Well appointed with imported linens and modern amenities like high-definition television and wireless internet, every room is the perfect escape. For the ultimate in luxury, spend the night in the Liberty's spacious Abersol Suite. With 2,200 square feet of comfort, amazing views, and a spectacular terrace overlooking the Charles River, it's no wonder the Ebersol Suite has been named one of the top hotel suites in the world by Elite Traveler magazine. Good food and good times are in great supply at any of the hotel's five venues for drinking and dining. Clink on the lobby level features fresh local dishes with an extensive cocktail and wine list and an exciting and energetic atmosphere. My philosophy in cooking is uh, good clean flavors. Every ingredient should be carefully sourced and every ingredient should speak for itself. When people come into Clink, I want them to know that it's not your typical hotel restaurant. It's a destination where you have fun, not take the dining experience too seriously. Clink's vibrant social scene spills out into the Liberty Bar, where you can enjoy a drink and any of the dishes on Clink's menu. Downstairs, award-winning celebrity chef Lydia Shire brings her bold interpretation of traditional Italian cuisine to Scampo. One day I was looking through an Italian dictionary and I came across this word Scampo, which in Italian means to escape. And I thought, oh my God, this is perfect, we're in a jail. It's not a pure Italian restaurant because of course I throw in something that's a little Indian or a little Moroccan or something, but it's a, a crowd pleaser. It's, it's a comfort food place. We have al fresco dining. We have 60 seats there with colored umbrellas, very pretty. We have a, a great lounge bar area where we have high top tables, so it's perfect for, you know, that action crowd right after war. And if you're looking for cocktails and company, nothing beats the energy of Alibi, or the sophistication of Catwalk Bar, overlooking the Liberty Lobby, exclusive to hotel guests. 
lots of energy, yeah, especially in a Friday or Saturday night. Lots of locals do come here from Beacon Hill, and uh, they mix in with the hotel crowd, and it's, it's really fun, really nice energy in here. The success of the bars and restaurants are beyond my wildest imaginations. People come here and they want to be here. There's something about the space that makes people want to congregate and be together. The Liberty Hotel has become a fixture in the local community, offering complimentary events to hotel guests and the public through the Liberty Affairs program. So Liberty Affairs is happenings within the hotel. It's, it's a way for the community to come in and experience the property. It's a way for hotel guests to come out of their room and experience the property. Every Monday, meet Clink Executive Chef Joseph Margate and enjoy an educational and entertaining evening of food and wine for Margate Mondays. Tuesdays, it's all about fine art and fine wines. Our Gallery Night series showcases works by local galleries and artists, plus a complimentary wine tasting. The sweet sounds of acoustic jazz fill the Liberty Bar every Wednesday night at Whole Note Wednesdays. And you can get a sneak peek of the latest fashions by local designers and boutiques each week during fashionably late Thursdays. Depending on what it is you like to do or what night of the week works for you, you can come in and you can see the beautiful architecture and you can experience the staff and the food and the beverage and everything that we have going on. On Saturdays, stay in shape with Winter Workout, a complimentary group fitness class at the Liberty. During the summer months, enjoy the Liberty outdoors with yoga in the yard on Saturdays and the best of Hollywood on display on Movie Mondays. The Liberty Hotel is one of the only pet-friendly hotels in the city. Every Wednesday evening during the summer months, it's canines and cocktails in the yard for yappier hour. You can't find programs like these at any other hotel in the city. We really wanted to create something for everybody. So whether you're a hotel guest or a local, there really is something here for you at the Liberty. There is something for everyone at the Liberty. It's a one-of-a-kind setting for weddings, fundraisers, and corporate events of all sizes. The Liberty is definitely not a box, that's for sure. It is a historic structure, and it is award-winning in terms of its design, and we like to be able to use every square inch of this space in order to make it work for the client. And anytime we do an event here, people walk away and say, I've never seen anything like that, and they absolutely love it. Throughout the Liberty Hotel, guests receive top-notch service from friendly, helpful, experienced staff. It's a place where people can feel comfortable in casual clothes and whatever. So I want that the service be sort of not in your face, not fancy, not um, tuxedoed waiters, and not a lot, a lot of flair, just absolutely drop dead high quality um, in, a, in a subtle way, in a friendly way, in a warm way. We've now created a place that's actually quite restful, quite calming, quite at peace with itself, and a place that uh, Bostonians and visitors to our great city will just love coming to see because it is a great piece of Victorian architecture and a great piece of history that has now been preserved. I want people to feel liberated, excited, to have a sense of wonder and awe that's genuine, sort of a childlike feeling. I want people to have fun and it's really nice to check into a hotel and be in a hotel that has a sense of a playfulness about it and that you feel like this is really quintessentially Boston. Whether you're in Boston for work or for play, we guarantee your visit to the historic Liberty Hotel will be unforgettable.